Do you speak uh, English? Sure, what do you need? Okay, just a question. Do you know what is a chemtrail? The what? A chemtrail. I do know what a chemtrail is. Yeah, and is it true? Uh, well, there's a big debate. Okay, now... Uh, I want to go on record there. Okay, now but uh, do you believe it? I don't know. Um, well, I don't have enough information about that. Okay. Yeah, because I saw a lot of videos in the internet, uh, and uh, it really looks uh, believable. Well, it's arguable both ways, I think. Yeah? It depends on uh -huh. which side you're on, but... Yeah. But what is your personal um, opinion of it? I think there's part of truth. Part of truth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we should investigate this because when it's true, imagine so many people they suffer of this. Of this. Okay. Yeah, it's a necessary evil, you could say. Yeah. <laughs> How about the, the chemtrail generator? Oh. Uh, let's make sure that that thing's working. We're gonna, we're check this out. Oh, look at that. They're working. They're working. You can see the chemtrails coming out of the entrance here. Look at that. I'm dying to take a picture oh, of that's my, cool. my neighbor. You got yeah, so I chemtrail see. I'm doing a video. Chemtrail generators are on. And yeah, there it is. Look, you can see them. Oh, hey, right. that's awesome. Ooh, it's, oh, it's working. How much more evidence do you need? that they're spraying us with shit. Absolute fucking shit. Oh, there goes another one. In the process. Don't tell me the, these pilots don't know what the fuck they're doing. They know what they're doing. They're spreading chemicals on. Now for the last two weeks, it's been hammered like this and everybody has got a bad chest, a cough and a cold. Now you're telling me that that's a virus? something that just naturally occurs bullshit this is where it's coming from all this shit they're landing on your fucking heads wake up people it's time to fucking wake up aircraft making a condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale you create a condensation trail that little cloud is a condensation trail now if you take a two mile walk on a cold day and you can turn around and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles. That's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails. The contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30. It takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus. There's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust. That turns to ice crystals, and that's what you see, the white stream behind it. Those white crystals of ice warm up, dissolve, and the smoke goes away. And it never lasts more than a minute. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal. They're not natural. There's something going on. I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. It's got to be some outside influence doing that. Thank you. See those mountains over there? Not really. They're there. You can't barely see them. Why can't you see them? You say it's fog? It's not fucking fog. It's noon. The fog should have burned off a long time ago. See those mountains? I'm, 
getting sick and tired of being sprayed every fucking night while I sleep. They're spraying the fuck out of us. I'm calling it fucking fog. It's bullshit. Look at those mountains. You can't even see them. And they're right there, a couple miles away. I'm sick of this shit. When you look into that and ask questions, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, contrails. No, no. Contrails are behind a jet. If you see a jet flying very high, the stripe, the condensed stripe behind it. That's normal. But in areas at first observed where there's very little population, you see a jet airplane going. It's not only one. They have four condensed stripes behind them. They go this way, this way, this way, this way, and then this way, this way, this way, this way. And when you inquire about it, ask people. You recognize that the real climate change scientists are truly ticked off because apparently nobody really is asking them. It's the special interest, in my opinion, it's the oil industry, the energy industry that are blowing smoke up somebody's you know what. Take a look at these things. I'm supposed to be out shopping and they're spraying chemtrails all goddamn day over my head. It's beginning to look a lot like chem sky google is it okay if i make this video will i lose my account will i be banned from youtube for recording the fucking sky is that okay google am i allowed to do that no you can't you can't show the sky either google is completely corrupt talk about chemtrails you lose your fucking channel how dare you expose the u.s government and their bullshit lies how dare you record the fucking sky? 65, 66 passes. Wow, look at all of those contrails. It's all natural. Saturate your sky with chemtrails. You can have a chem halo. Wow, you thought double rainbows were cool? Look at the death in the sky. It's a chem halo. Oh my god, let's all celebrate as the Nazis slaughter us. U.S. military whistleblower, she has an amazing, fascinating story that we will share with you here today. Now, Kristen, can you tell us what branch of the military you were in and what you uncovered? Sure. Um, I wa was in the Air Force on active duty for nine years, and I worked in bioenvironmental engineering. And now i know the issue came up with chemtrails i know that's an extremely controversial issue um a lot of people are extremely divided on this issue but you actually saw things uh, from your experiences uh that kind of give it a little bit more vid validity validity uh than i actually saw ever before uh can you go into the details of exactly what you saw yeah basically to summarize it part of my job was to know everything that was going on in the military and what that might what type of impact that might have on human health, and then the environmental aspects and impacts. What chemicals are we using? How are we disposing of it? Kind of cradle to grave. So we were the internal um, compliance people for following OSHA and EPA standards. Uh, one part of that process was to approve chemicals, hazardous materials. You know, what are you using? Why do you need it? Where is it being used? And tracking that disposal. Um, after it being brought to my attention about chemtrails or geoengineering, I, I used to think it was crazy. It actually was disrespectful to my line of work because here we are trying to prevent environmental aspects and impacts um, and not have anybody get sick from our operations. But in, in an attempt to debunk, I, it changed my life. I started noticing things, I started noticing large quantities on the system where I would approve chemicals that did not have a manufacturer name wasn't tied to a building and that, that was normal protocol. When I started asking questions, um, I slowly became demonized. Um, a, a couple years passed after that when I asked again and people realized I was kind of being more vocal about it on social media, I was starting to be thrown into a mental institution and have my daughter taken away. Wow. That changed my life. I no longer view the military the same way and I feel like after nine years of trying to uphold an oath, I'm able to do that now. I'm going to tape this this time. So this is what we did before. This is what this is. This is the wine spit test where you rinse your mouth out and then you take grape juice and you hold it in your mouth and you spit it out into a petri dish. Well, what we did is we used the zeolite, the zeoforce. This stuff says it cages this stuff, this, this stuff that's in these chemtrails. It's in our bodies. 
Okay, so then now my Chris is just going to pour in a little bit of that little tiny bit of the 91% alcohol. Watch, the stuff is alive. Watch what happens. Pour some in just a little. Watch. Look. Look what it does. Now you can film it up close. I am. That's totally freaking... Is that freaking <sighs> freaky? <laughs> This is in every single one of us. This is spookier and weirder than I even want to go there. Look at it. Starting to get the other stuff. It was climbing out of the Petri dish. It was like trying to climb out. Whether people believe in chemtrails or not, the geoengineering should be scary enough. And when people learn about geoengineering, chemtrails will then become apparent because they're the same. This is from the snow surface at Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. 61,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum. This is just ordinary snow water. Mm -hmm. And people are drinking this stuff when they're hiking on the mountain. And remember, government action is required at 1,000. This is 61 times over the government limit, and our hikers are drinking this poisonous water on Mount Shasta Mountain oh itself. God. Strontium, 383. Barium strontium will take away from your bone structure, make for weak bone structure. Uh, the aluminum, though, that's scary, you know. What is it? Alzheimer's, autism, gosh knows what that's doing. All right. I've just went out there and um, got this one. This is the chemtrail aftermath, as you can see on the date. This is that white stuff that comes from the chemtrails. And I smashed this off the screen going on the inside. I want to see what this is going to do. Nasty. It's got the little white specks in it too. Oh, and you just the type of the water you can see the strands. Okay. That one got away. Numerous air quality studies, uh, including from uh, CARB, California Air Quality Resource Board, have named submicron sized particulates as being particularly harmful for human respiration. Through all the discussions today, uh, I have not heard any mention of this fallout, and has, has this been studied, and also the effects of a highly reactive metal like aluminum on toxifying soils and waters? The question is, what would be the effects of these materials on human health if they came down into the stratosphere, in, in, in particular, uh, small particles and aluminum? So, so the, the collaborators of mine working on the aerosol scheme are actually folks from Carnegie Mellon who focused on human health impacts. And while we haven't published it, that was the very first thing we did, was do the order of magnitude calculation in a level pencil and paper, but with an expert on human health impacts about whether there could be an issue. And, and for aluminum or other particles, there are a lot of toxicological things that need to get looked at seriously. But if you're just thinking about the sheer number of particles and the hu helmet, human health impact of small particles, the answer is, well, we haven't published it. That was the first thing we looked at with some of the leading experts who do uh, epidemiological research on human health impacts, and it's not even close to being an issue. 10 megatons of aluminum dumped into the, the uh, atmosphere would have no human health impact. So, so let me be more careful here. We're to separate out the toxicological, so the Illumina we've only begun to research and published nothing. The Illumina we've only begun to research and published nothing. Dane looked at him and he said, so you're telling me that spraying 10 to 20 megatons of aluminum, as you said, would have no human health effects? He took a deep breath and he swallowed and he said, let me be more careful here. We haven't done anything serious on Illumina, and so there could be something terrible that we'll find tomorrow we haven't looked at. And that, for me, that was the whole main 
point of, of what is, is going to be coming out to the public. It's, it's the damaging effects of aluminum that are being found around the world in massive amounts. Here's David Keith confronted on this very issue, and he, he looked, you know, at that point like, like they just let the cat out of the bag. Mm -hmm. We haven't done anything serious on Illumina, and so there could be something terrible that we'll find tomorrow. We haven't looked at. And telling them that we have to lay a pattern up there to prevent sun energy from hitting Earth. And what they're doing in there, it's now pretty much determined. They're putting in there aluminum, barium, and strontium. Now you take these chemicals and run them through a PubMed literature search in respect to human health, you will find more than 3,000 papers. Aluminum alone, I mean, aluminum, Alzheimer's, right? Mental, I mean, it, there's no question about it. Now, it so happens when there were people who really paid attention. If there was some, due to some weather and air changes, wind patterns, suddenly this stuff that they're laying out there, it comes down in rain. If it falls on crops, it kills the crops. It's like they have big blisters on, on, uh, on any one of the crops, vegetables or things like this. Organic crops, totally destroyed, can't even use them. And when it comes to an area, for example, there's, there's like forests, after that, a few weeks after that, they're totally dead. They're toothpicks, and you can see it all on the internet. Luft- und Raumfahrttechniker und habe Flugzeuge repariert und so weiter. Ich möchte euch jetzt mal ganz kurz erzählen, was ich gemacht habe. Ich habe auf dem militärischen Sonderflughafen Oberpfaffenhofen in Zusammenarbeit mit dem Deutschen Luft- und Raumfahrtzentrum ein Flugzeug mit einer Sprüheinrichtung ausgestattet, was an unserem Himmel giftige Substanzen versprüht. Als ich mit den Beweisen dafür, den Fotos und allem drum und dran, zu meiner grünen Abgeordneten im Bürgerbüro gegangen bin und gesagt habe, hier, so sieht's aus, ich stelle mich jedem Untersuchungsausschuss zur Verfügung, ist drei Tage später mein Boss zu mir nach Hause gekommen und hat gesagt, ich muss dich entlassen, da werden von ganz oben große Räder gedreht, die ich nicht mehr halten kann. Ich kriege keinen Job mehr in der Luftfahrt. Maybe 6.8, if you look at the darkest little portions in there. But this is black oak leaf. This is black oak acorns. This should be very acid, and I'm getting 10 times higher than expected. There's something really wrong here. Amphibians, uh, great decline. Uh, used to sound like the Ozarks here with the tree frogs, and they're, uh, there's a small, small fraction of what there was here in only four years. So there's something very wrong going on with the ecology around here. When you should be getting 5.5 and you're getting 6.8, there's something damn wrong. There was mason jars and they were brand new, sterilized, and that's what we catch the rain in. Mm -hmm. And then there was a HEPA filter that we tested the air with. Okay, so you caught rain and then you, you basically filtered air. Mm -hmm. What did you find? Aluminum and barium. So you uncovered a lot of these hidden chemicals. Uh, where's the connection with the chemtrails? Well, the connection is, at first, when I saw these large quantities of aluminum, barium, strontium oxides and sulfates, I thought, well, this could be for an industrialized process, for something called shot painting or, you know, bead blasting, things that you see in kind of the automotive industry. Except those were already accounted for. I already knew how much was used for those processes. It was a little type of different constituent. And the first thing I did, part of my job was to sample air, soil, and water. So that's what I did. I, I air sampled the soil, the air, and the water. And due to my profession, I know at which levels or limits of detection you need to check that at.
and the amount of pollution that was in my area. And this is tests I did in Oklahoma, you know, in Georgia, in Chicago, where I'm now. Um, but in taking those samples, I knew the background because a lot of these things are naturally occurring yeah. and elemental, but not in this form and not in this quantity. So how did it get there? So just to clarify, you see these huge storage containers uh, of these chemicals. Then you do the test on the air and soil, and you see these same chemicals in the air and soil now. And that's pretty, pretty much been the main evidence I've seen people who are for chemtrails use, is saying, look at the soil, look at the water, look at all the chemicals in there. And now you're finally the person who's like, wait, I worked in the mills area, I saw a bunch of these chemicals there. That's crazy. It, it is crazy. I used to think it was crazy. And everyone asks, why are there no pictures? Yeah. Well, I'd like to see you try to take a picture inside of a restricted air hangar because you'll have an M16 in your back. Yeah. And um, the, the hardest part for people to realize is, you know, where are the pilots? Like, there's, there's people who have come forward, but these people are scared. You look at what's happened to whistleblowers, look at Snowden, look at Manning. People are scared. And I think because this topic is already labeled a conspiracy theory, I don't think the government necessarily views me as a threat yet. Mm. And um, I mean, I know it's not, not the most safe thing to do, but it's the right thing to yeah. do. It's laughed at. It's, it's, it's made obscure. We began to eventually test to see if, if uh, in fact, there was credence to what we were seeing. In the, from the first test in uh, precipitation in spring of 06, mm -hmm. and tested seven parts per billion. Uh, we've since had tests that have escalated as high as, high as 3,450 parts per billion. That's a 50,000 percent increase in aluminum. I sent this water, see it's right there, it says backyard rain gauge. Uh -huh. Aluminum, 1,010 micrograms per liter of aluminum. Uh -huh. And here's barium, 8 micrograms per liter of barium. And this is from the labs up in Redding, California. This is a certified government report. And here's what normal is. I asked him what would be normal. Point five, five. Point five would be normal. For and aluminum? I, for aluminum. And the maximum allowed in drinking water, they said 50 micrograms per liter. And government action required at 1,000. Well, we're over 1,000. It's not just activists anymore. Now the scientific community that has their head on straight um, is speaking out. The question I have is why why are they even chemtrailing? Why is the military and government chemtrailing us? I, I don't know. What's your understanding of it? Well, I don't have anything that can solidify, but I do have my opinions, and that is the history of weather weaponry. I mean, you can take away people's monetary system, you can take away people's rights, but you take their food and you disable their ecosystem, that's the number one way to handicap people. And they've done it since the 40s, it's not new. Also seeing how um, it started out to be a, a government program, and then noticing that it is an, a, a way for private corporations to profit off this, whether it's controlling uh, agriculture, uh, you know, profiting. There's certain events, you know, you lose money on if, if it rains. or So knowing that you can kind of predict and control the weather, there's money there. I've also, you know, heard that it could be tied to Agenda 21, but for me, it's not about why. It's just stopping it. It needs to be stopped. Yeah, and it's called the crazy ass conspiracy theory. The Chinese are doing it now openly. They yes. did it for the Olympics. I mean, they've sprayed people. Um, I'm sure you've heard the St. Louis story. They did yeah. biological testing. So if the government is capable of doing that, why is it so hard for people to believe? And I don't know if you've heard about David Keith, but he's actually a geoengineer, Canadian. Uh, he works at Harvard. He just wrote a new book on climate engineering. And inadvertently, he's brought more awareness to this because I feel they're getting ready to admit it and they're trying to sell it to us. You know, at, yeah. it's kind of like they sell vaccines to us, they sell fluoride to us. You know, fluoride is a, is a mining waste product. Well, how can we make that good? You know, put it in your water. So yeah. I think that they're trying to now kind of admit it and act like they're going to start doing it and they've already been doing it.